Sometimes there's a mystery detectives cannot solve. Their problems only multiply, solutions just evolve. And then comes the great divide that splits things all apart. Then you need the master, a man with math and heart. He's Abacus the Great. He'll clear up all suspicion. He'll distribute, regroup, solve for X, cause he's a math magician. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. All things which he excels. Polygons, fractions, a man of many spells. The steps are simple, one by one, the numbers infinite. For help in math, both big and small, call Abacus the Great! I've been staring at these packs of pudding long as I can remember Wondering how to divide them If we split them in half Then we'd both get four And our fraction would be four eighths if simplified, it could be two fourths, which is also one half in simplest form. All, All of these, these different fractions, fractions are equivalent. See the line that divides the numbers, they have names. The top is called the numerator. It represents the part of the whole. Now look down. The bottom number The, the denominator is what represents the whole I know each number has a purpose Each of them will help me Understand these fractions I know If I break it into four groups Then I'll get one of those groups Then I will have one fourth I understand fractions are a part of a whole Numerator's part Denominator's whole One half, one third, one fourth, one fifth Now, now I know So I'm going to divide the numbers They have names The top is called The numerator It represents a part of the whole Now look down. The denominator represents the whole that's beneath the line. See the line that divides the numbers. They have names. The top is called the numerator. The bottom represents the whole denominator. And now we know what there's to know. fun. If you haven't figured it out, in this week's episode, we're going to be talking about fractions, numerators, denominators, equivalency. How about we get into it? Alrighty, guys, let's talk fractions. Take a look at this bar on the screen, one big long bar. But what happens if I divide that bar into five different pieces? Shoo! I still have the same bar, still the same bar. Just divide it into five pieces. So that whole bar is five pieces. Now, what happens if we make three of those pieces white? So two of them are now pink and three of those pieces are white. What I have done here is create for you a fraction. I want you to think about the words part and whole. Okay? The part of the bar that is pink was two. And if you remember, and you can still count, the whole bar was divided into five pieces. So the part that I'm looking for goes on top, 
while what the whole thing was broken into goes on the bottom. I have then created a fraction of 2 fifths or 2 over 5 to represent the number of squares of that bar that are pink. On the opposite side of that, we could think about how many squares of that are white. So I still have five pieces. So that fraction will still have five on the bottom because the whole bar is still divided into five pieces. But if I want to talk about the number of boxes of that bar that are white, how many is it? Tell me. Good. I'm going to write a three on top. So two fifths of that bar were pink and three fifths of that bar were white. So what I did there was took a whole, one whole piece broken into five littler pieces, and then we talked about the fractions that we shaded it. These top and bottom numbers have a specific name. Remember the top was the part and the bottom was the whole. We also refer to the top as the numerator and the bottom as the denominator. So the part of the group that I am talking about is the numerator while the whole of the group is the denominator. I'm going to use these words going forward, so make sure you're familiar with them. Say them one more time with me. The top number was the numerator, and the bottom number is the denominator. We can also look at this as a group of objects. So rather than one bar broken into pieces, I can look at it as a group of objects. So here, I have a group of 10 circles. Now what if I take four of these circles and I make them blue? So now I had 10 purple circles, except for rather than all of them being purple, now four of those circles are blue. So my question for you would then be, what fraction of those circles are purple? Remember, how many were there total? That's your whole. That's going to go on the bottom. So I have 10 circles total, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of them are purple, or what fraction of them are blue? My numerator is then going to be 4, while my denominator maintains being 10. So 6 tenths with a numerator of 6 and a denominator of 10 represents how many of my circles were purple, and 4 tenths with the numerator of 4 and the denominator of 10, represents how many of those circles were blue. Now, let's talk about equivalent fractions. I started with 2 fifths here. Now, an equivalent fraction is just going to be any fraction that is equal. Remember, equivalent just means equal to that same fraction. Now, I'm not going to change my bar here at all. My bar is still going to be the same size and it's going to have the same amount of it shaded, all I'm going to do is break each box into two boxes. There's two, there's two, there's two, there's two, and there's two. Now if you count, one, two, three, four of those boxes are now pink, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of those boxes total. Two-fifths is equivalent to four-tenths. I didn't change my bar at all. My bar is still exactly the same, all I did was broke it into smaller pieces. So two fifths then becomes four tenths. You can think about that a little bit differently by saying I multiply that by two to get four, and I multiply that by two to get ten. Now, why does multiplying both of them by two work? Well, what is two over two? If I have two circles and both of them are white, that means my whole group is white. Any fraction where my numerator and denominator are the same, 2 over 2, 3 over 3, 4 over 4, is just a different way of writing 1. So to say 2 fifths multiply 2 over 2, I'm just saying 2 fifths multiply 1. Now I could take that again, and if I draw a bar down the middle of this here. What I've done then is I've multiplied this by 2 over 2 as well, meaning I just multiply that top number by 2 and that bottom number by 2. Now rather than counting all of my squares, 4 multiplied 2 is 8, 
10 multiplied 2 is 20. Okay, 2 fifths is equal to 4 tenths, which is also equal to 8 twentieths. Now, there's an infinite supply of equivalent fractions that we could write out. We could continue to multiply it. 16 fortieths, 32 eightieths. We could even multiply it by 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 5 times 3 is 15. 6 fifteenths would also be equivalent. As long as you are multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by the same number, so that you're multiplying that fraction by one, then you are creating what would be an equivalent fraction to your original fraction. Now there's another way to think about equivalent fractions, and that would be simplest form. Now simplest form is kind of a misleading term, because that word simplest, depending on how you're using that fraction, it might be simplest to keep it as 4 over 10. Uh, but we call it simplest form just simply meaning that you want it to be its smallest possible number. Now, simplest form, you're going to do the opposite of what we were just doing for equivalent fractions. Uh, we are going to divide it down. Now, remember, anytime you divide a number by 1, that means the same thing. And anytime my fraction has the same numerator and denominator, that simply means 1. So if I take my 4 tenths, and I divide it by 1, which I'm going to write my 1 as 2 over 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So the simplest form of 4 over 10 is 2 over 5. Now, that's still an equivalent fraction. It's just an equivalent fraction that we created by dividing. And because 2 over 5 cannot reduce any further, 2 over 5 is what would be considered the simplest form. Let me show you another method of finding the simplest form of a fraction. I'm going to write this a little bit differently, and I'm going to write my 8 32nd right next to each other in a little, what looks like kind of an upside down division box. Now, this is what I like to call the cake method, uh, because you end up making a layered cake one on top of the other. Now, I want to think about 8 and 32 and what a common factor of those would be, meaning what's a number that's going to divide into both of those. Now, I'm going to say 2. Now, I'm going to divide out both of those. 2 goes into 4, 2, 4, 6, 8, 4 times. 2 goes into 32, 16 times. So 4 sixteenths would be an equivalent fraction to 8 32nds. But is 4 sixteenths simplest form? Is there another number that will go into both 4 and 16? And if your answer is yes, then I'm going to do the same thing. 4 and 16 are both even numbers. That means 2 is going to go into both of them again. 2 goes into 4, 2 times. 2 goes into 16, 8 times. Now again, 2 eighths is an equivalent fraction to 4 sixteenths and 8 thirty seconds. But is 2 eighths simplest form? Is there a common factor or a common number that will divide into both of those? And the answer would be yes. 2 again, because they are both even numbers. 2 goes into 2 one time. 2 goes into 8 four times. So 1 fourth is equivalent to 2 eighths, is equivalent to 4 sixteenths, and 8 thirty second. Now 1 can only be divided by 1, so it's not even considered a prime number. but one fourth is going to be our simplest form of eight thirty seconds. Now you're going to see this cake method in later episodes: greatest common factor, least common multiple. We're finding equivalent fractions. We're finding simplest form. This method is amazing for so many different things, and I'm so happy that I could start to introduce it to you. We're going to ask a story problem. Jack dressed as a bear to go trick or treating. He was able to get forty eight pieces of candy. If 12 of those pieces of candy were Snickers bars, what fraction of his candy was Snickers bars? So think about that. 12, 48. What is the whole? What is the denominator of this going to be? How many total pieces of candy were there? And the answer is that 48. So my bottom number, the denominator, is going to be that 48. Now, what fraction of those were Snickers? Or what, what part of those? And the part would be 12. So 12 48ths of his candy were Snickers. But 12 48ths is kind of a big number. 
So we're going to reduce that down to its simplest form. So I'm going to take 1248s and I'm going to do my little cake method here. Now I could start with 2 because 2 goes into 12 and 48. I also know that 4 goes into 12 and 48. So maybe I'm going to start with 4. 4 goes into 12 three times. 4 goes into 48 12 times. Now is there something that will go into both 3 and 12? And the answer is yes, 3. 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 goes into 12 four times. So the simplest form of 12 48s is 1 fourth. That tells me that 1 fourth of Jack's candy was Snickers bars, which in my opinion is quite the treat. You can eat it mixed with caramel. Mm -mm, good. Let's go to our apprentice question for this week. This week's apprentice question comes to us from an apprentice named Jared. Hey Abigail, if one elephant eats 260 pounds of food in a day, how much do seven elephants eat in a year? All right, Jared, there's a lot to unpack in that question. Let's get to it. If one elephant eats 260 pounds of food in a day, how much would seven elephants eat in a year? So I have 260. I have seven, and then I have a year. If one elephant eats 260 in a day, I first kind of want to figure out how much one elephant is going to eat in a year, which means I have to do that 260 times 365. Now we're going to multiply 260 times 365. <laughs> So one elephant is going to eat approximately 94,900 pounds in a year. Now his question didn't stop at one. His question asked me how much would seven eat in a year. So I'm going to have to take that 94,900 and I'm going to have to multiply that by seven. Same method here. So, Jared, seven elephants would eat 664,300 LBS pounds of food in a year. Thanks for that question. Let's go ahead and jump into our magic trick for this. All right, apprentices, you ready to do some magic? I'm here to teach you how to make rice dance. We're going to start with some water. Now I've gone out and got some distilled water. The lack of minerals in it should make the trick work a little bit better than if we just use standard tap water. So we've got a cup of water. Now into that cup of water, I'm gonna mix some of my fine, fine dancing powder here. Okay, so I've got some dancing powder about a spoonful, and then we're just going to stir that until it's all mixed in. Now, on top of the water, we're just going to throw a pinch of rice. For effect, I'm going to put in a couple drops of food coloring. Now, the secret ingredient. I put in my dancing powder, but what good is a dance if there's not a partner? So this is the partner to the dancing powder. We're just gonna add in a little bit. A little bit more. Now we watch the magic happen. Zoom in, bring it in here. Now even after the fizzing stops, you can see them. Down, up, down, 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 up, up. The rice 
one grain at a time, just dancing. Down, down, up, up, down, down, down. There you have it, folks. The amazing dancing rice. That's it for this week's episode. As always, apprentices, until next time, make sure your math is magical. Hey guys, I can't believe we're winding down into our last couple of episodes. This summer's almost over. Crazy. Uh, if you guys liked what you saw today, as always, make sure you click that like button. Let me know. If you want to know when the next episode comes out and when future episodes do, make sure you click subscribe. We're almost done for this summer, but I've already got things in store for next summer, so keep an eye out. Uh, like, subscribe. If you want to get in touch, go ahead and email me because the great 2020 at gmail.com or you could record your very own apprentice video i have one more week i'm going to be making one more try to be that one person flipgrid.com slash abacus the great when you get there the student code you're going to use is simply the word math go into that grid record me a video i'd love to hear from you guys until next time peace and love